Hey guys, uh, welcome to this quick tutorial about how to create a 3D noise patterns on a uh, CG position pass in Nuke. Um, so this shot here is just a quick example of where I actually use this kind of idea. If I just let it play, um, this is just a CG car kind of sitting in this parking lot and there's some raindrips kind of falling. Um, and there were some raindrips already rendered on this car, but I wanted to add some extra ones. So this is a really good technique for adding uh, texture detail, uh, dirt, um, drips, all kinds of things. Whatever you can do with the noise pattern, you can do with this technique, uh, but in 3D on a CG position pass. Um, so if you guys want the full project file for this shot with the CG car and everything like that, um, that's available in my, in my Nuke 303 class, uh, and you, you'll get the script along with you know an entire class on how to accomplish this shot, uh, along with a variety of techniques. Um, but I'm just going to teach you a very short, uh, quick uh, trick from that class, which is this 3D noise. So if I go over here to a kind of just a little example I created, it's just a cube and a scanline render, nothing special. Uh, but if we go in the scanline render and we go to the shader tab, if you switch the output vectors, you can turn on the surface point and set it the channel to P. So that's going to export our uh, position pass out of the scanline render. So if I copy this, uh, actually I'll just create a new one, create a shuffle node, plug it into that scanline render and switch that to P. And you will see that we have our position pass stored there. And if we switch to R, G and B, we can see that's storing the three axis uh, in that um, information pass there. So what we can do with this position pass, uh, if we create an expression, so I'm gonna create an expression node, uh, it's a really simple expression and all we have to do is go to this last uh, box here. So if you if you guys aren't familiar with the expression node, um, each one of these uh, boxes basically represent one of the color channels that we have. So and you can put like a math expression here to adjust those channels. So you see this box is checked red, this, this box is checked green and this box is checked blue. So these represent the channels. So just to quickly explain it, uh, if, I, if I were to just put the number one in the red channel, it's going to make our red channel a solid uh, value of one. So that's kind of how this setup is working. Uh, but we want to uh, basically go to the last channel here, which is the alpha. So I'm gonna erase that one and, and we're gonna type in a little expression here. So we're gonna type in noise, parentheses, R, comma, G, comma, B. So that's gonna take the information from the red, green, and blue channel and put it into a noise expression. So if I hit enter, and I look at the alpha channel, we get this kind of strange result. Um, so something's happening. If I disable it, you see there's nothing. So we're creating this sort of uh, effect, but it's not very useful at the moment. So a way we can make this more useful is if we, if we go up to the node tab and right click and say manage user uh, knobs. We're gonna create a new knob. So choose the floating point slider. And in the name, we're just gonna type scale and the label will type scale and we'll set the maximum to 30. And what that's gonna do is create this little slider, uh, which is gonna allow us to control this pattern. Uh, however, right now it's not doing anything because we haven't attached it. So uh, if we go back to the expression and, and we go to each uh, box here and we type uh, asterisk uh, or the multiply symbol and type uh, multiplied by scale and put that after each letter uh, on our little expression here. So now we see that that pattern is being driven by the slider. So when I increase or decrease, we're actually changing the size of our noise pattern, which is really perfect for creating all kinds of different patterns um, that we can use. So another thing we can do to have more control over this, if this isn't enough already, um, you know, you can be creative with this. This could be dirt patterns. We can mask it off. You know, for example, if we wanted uh, dirt around the bottom of that cube. We could easily just go here with a roto shape or something else and just kind of mask it. Um, but another way to control this it, um, basically noise pattern is to put a grade node before the expression. And the important thing to do is uh, uncheck the black clamp. You see it creates this weird streaking. And the way these information pa passes uh, work, if we go back to the RG and B, we see that uh, it looks like half black and half white if I look at like the red channel. But if I'm sampling, if I take the sample and I sample, we see that some of these values are negative. Um, so if, if in the grade node, we have this black clamp, which is on by default, 
um, we're actually losing all the values of that position pass. So it's breaking this whole effect. So what you need to do is just uncheck the black clamp. And now you'll be able to you know, have our image back. But what we can do is uh, go to the gain and split it into the four color channels. And now we can adjust uh, the red, green, and blue separately, which is going to allow us to scale this however we want. So if I increase or decrease the green, we'll see that we're actually scaling that noise pattern in the Y axis. If we uh, do the red, we see the X, and then in the blue we have the Z. So that's how you have a lot of control over this pattern, and you know you can mix it in different ways. You could even do, I don't know what a gamma, I guess you could use a gamma a little bit, kind of breaks it, but um, it's mainly these uh, three color channels to scale it. And that's kind of the main idea to get these patterns. So how can we use this like practically, uh, other than what I just explained? Um, so in this uh, project, which is available in the description below if you guys are interested, um, I created some extra drips on the wheels of these of this car. So if I if I if I gain up here, we can see there's some little drips and, and details uh, on this car. So I'm just going to go to my example and show you guys uh, exactly what that is. So if I gain up a little bit, we can see uh, that's what's happening. So I'm going to go before. We see there's kind of a wheel, but there's no uh, high frequency little details on there. So what I did was I created an expression with that pattern. Uh, just using the position pass of the car that comes with the CG render and I'm just gaining up a little bit using that pattern so we get the kind of base highlight of the water drips uh, and then what I did was I shuffled out the uh, alpha channel into the color channels so what is that doing not not much is putting it just in all the channels but what it allows us to do is easily key and uh, make these dots smaller so I keyed the already result that's here to get uh, tiny drips um, basically for in the same position as, as the other ones and then I just uh, put those on top as well so now we start to get small highlights small specular highlights on the drips of the the uh, tire and the last thing I did was uh, I took that same expression this uh, pattern and I transformed it uh, in its own stream here uh, by one pixel so I'm moving it over by one pixel, and then I'm using that to darken. So it's actually creating a simple drop shadow effect on our drips. So we get more of a 3D looking drip on the surface uh, where we want it. And that's a way that we can add uh, a little bit of surface drips. And if I, if I go back to the normal exposure, it just adds a little bit of uh, detail that catches your eye if you're looking in that area. And that's kind of the level of detail that we can um, get into uh, on shots if you want so that's kind of the theory and the principle uh, hopefully you guys got something out of it if you like the video hit the like button it really helps the YouTube algorithm and helping the channel grow and I can produce more content uh, like this so thanks so much